So I'm just chopping up some olives, which I bought today from Lidl. I'm gonna chop up some onions and some garlic to go with that. So here's a little tip when you're cutting onions uh, and you want them in little squares uh, when you're cooking, I tend to cut down the length of the onion. I don't know if you can see like this. So you've got slits running from the stemmy fluffy bit here all the way to the back. And then you want to go in sideways like this from the top. So you're cutting these little slits like this. Mind your fingers, keep them like this pinched. Then cut down the, the onion and boom, look, you got lovely little squares of onion to go in what you're cooking. And then this little last bit here, just kind of do exactly the same thing. Cut some little slits down it and then just cut across like this. And then toss the bit in the middle. Woo -hey! So now smashing up the garlic, uh, give it a nice chop. I find give it a crush and then you can peel all the skins off it way, way, way easier. Um, so yeah, mind, you, mind the palm of your hand, you don't want to like flay the uh, skin from your palms. Um, so be a bit, I keep saying erm all the time, fucking gotta stop doing that. Um, ah! Sweet Jesus. This is the thing about vlogging that I didn't realize. You have so many habits that you use in common speech that you don't realize you do. And when you're listening to your footage back, I realize that I say like, um, and so much, such a pain to stop saying that and articulate what you want to say without using like, um, and and. So I'm trying my best not to say um as much as I can, but it's pretty damn hard. I will tell you that much for free. Okay, so we have got the onions, the garlic, the olives in a pan. I'm going to use some olive oil that we got given as a Christmas present. Don't usually use olive oil if we're trying to be healthy, but sometimes, you know, you want to stick a little bit in for that flavor. Oh, quality control, look. There's like a little, one of those little fluffy duffy bits of the onion there. So if some of you don't know, I do a little bit of spoon carving. It's kind of a new hobby. I started at Christmas. I got given a really nice Robin Wood carving axe and hook knife. And I've just been starting to carve some spoons. And this is, I think, my third spoon. And you know what? Pretty happy with it. It kind of looks a bit more like an ice cream scoop. So we've got half an onion, three cloves of garlic, some olives. And I'm cooking this on a low heat. Uh, normally you would stick your onions in first to cook and then the garlic after because the garlic cooks quicker and goes brown but couldn't be bothered to do that so if you cook it on a medium heat and give it a swish the garlic won't go brown and bitter and horrible so there's something to bear in mind. So we got some Linda McCartney vegetarian sausages. Use these loads. I mean yeah look they're not the they're not the healthiest thing in the world, I wouldn't call them a superfood, but if you're vegan, vegetarian, and you want to stick something in a stew, or maybe a curry, or something that you need that kind of proteiny, sausagey goodness, Linda McCartney's are the winners. I go for the standard vegetarian sausages. I've kind of gone off the rosemary ones, they're a little bit grainy, and the chorizo ones are just not good. Hells loves the rosemary ones, if you heard that whelp there though her favorites but i like these standard ones 99 pence in morrison's people so these are normally on offer especially now that people have realized that veganism is right on there are lots of sales on vegan items in the shops like the fries range fries do sausages schnitzels nuggets and stuff all vegan so you're going to see these uh featuring probably quite prominently on the sales in your usual supermarkets so if I'm in a rush, I will stick the sausages in a bowl and I'll whack them in the science oven and defrost them. Whack them in there for like two minutes till they're kind of par cooked. Uh, a lot of people don't like using the oven. I do. Uh, oven? A microwave. A lot of people don't like using the microwave. 
I don't really mind to be honest. If I'm saving time, it is what it is. So we're gonna add some stout. This is vegan, I got it from Morrison's. It is chocolate orange stout by Black Sheep. Just uh, frantically reading it to make sure it is vegan. Well, it looks pretty vegan to me, I could be wrong. It says, water, malted barley, wheat, hops, chocolate, orange peel. Well, it doesn't say that it's dairy chocolate. It normally stipulates um, if it's got milk chocolate in. So I'm, I'm, I'm going with, yes, this is vegan. If it isn't, well, shoot me. Oh my, this is rather delightful. Not crazy orangey. I thought it was gonna taste like a Terry's chocolate orange. It's actually pretty subtle. But it's got that lovely coffee, uh, molasses y, malty kind of. Do you know what? Fuck this, I can't assess ale in any kind of professional manner. It tastes good, buy it. Pouring in about half a bottle. Primarily because I want to drink some. Sausages are par cooked out of the science oven. We're going to chop them up and chuck them in the pan of simmering, ailey, garlicky, olivey, oniony goodness. Just cutting them up into little, little nugs. And I'll probably cut these nugs up like this into little mini half nugs. Okay, so we got everything in the pan and there's one thing to make note of. When you're cooking with booze, especially beer and ale and bitter, you need to add a bit of water. I like to add a bit of stock, a pinch of sugar and some salt and cook it on quite a high temperature now because otherwise it will be bitter as F and give a horrible kind of weird aftertaste. So it's important to make sure you cook off that residual alcohol and kind of dilute it a little bit with some stock. Otherwise, it's not gonna be very nice. Okay, so I've got a standard vegan stock cube, just as normal veggie stock cube you can pick up. I'm crumbling that in, like so. I'm gonna add some salt and pep. Nice dash of pep. Himalayan salt, because that's hard roll. Okay, I'm adding in a cup of water just to kind of dilute it down a little bit. Make it all nice and saucy. Give that a stir. Oh yeah. So we're gonna leave this to cook off for a little while, maybe let it kind of simmer for about 15 mins. Garlic powder. Now, even though I've added garlic, I always like to add a little dash of garlic powder into stuff. It just gives it a great flavor. I can't recommend this enough. This I bought from like the World Food item, item section in Sainsbury's. I go through stacks of this garlic powder. I put sprinkles of it in nearly everything. It's time. No, I mean, it, this is time. It's time. I'm not gonna go crazy with loads of herbs and spices in this. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. Salt, pepper, thyme, garlic, all that kind of jazz. I'm not gonna go too buck wild on this. Sometimes keeping it simple is better than jazzing it up with loads of peacock feathers and it tastes like SHI1 trouser. Tinned potatoes, they're so good. I use them all the time. They're pre-cooked, real good time saver. I really recommend using tinned potatoes. They're cheap, like 30p a tin. I'm gonna cut these up and whack them in. I'm also gonna cook up some red lentils and maybe some rice with this actually to stick in at the end, not sure. Just gonna chop these up right now. Chop them up roughly. We go rustic. And in they go. Hey, so just to recall, we have got potatoes in there now, onions, garlic, some olives, some stout, some salt and pepper, and some thyme, a bit of water. 
Uh, I'm going to taste it in a bit, and if it needs it, I might put a little sprinkle of sugar if it's just on a little bit of the bitter side, not too much. Okay, so I'm going to whack in some red split lentils. I've got um, some pre boiled water out the kettle in here because I don't want to spend 20 minutes waiting for it to boil. And we're going to go for, I don't know, probably about a cup, a cup's worth. One of my favorite ingredients since I've been vegan is nutritional yeast. It's flakes of yeast that are fortified with vitamin B12 and they give food a lovely cheesy, savory, kind of nutty taste. I use it in loads of stuff. So I'm gonna whack that in the frying pan and the red lentils are probably gonna take about 15 minutes to cook. This has been simmering for about 15 minutes now as well. So I'm gonna do a little taste test and see if we need to make any adjustments. Yeah, definitely needs a bit of sugar in there. It's a little bit bitter, so we're gonna put a little sprinkle of sugar on top, cook it on a higher heat, burn some of that alcohol out, and it should be good to go. We've got some Outpro single soy cream just to make this a little bit creamier and saucier. So we're gonna whack a little bit of that in. I haven't got much left, annoyingly. You could use unsweetened soy milk or unsweetened oat milk to make things creamy. I do it all the time. Just don't use sweetened, because otherwise it makes your savory food taste like Shoot. All right, so I just put a dash of unsweetened soy milk in there uh, just because it was thinning down a little bit, getting a little bit too low on the liquid side. So we got the cream, we got the soy in there, and now it's smelling amazing, and the sauce is thick and delicious. So we're going to let all this cook for about 15 about 15 20 minutes let it thicken up and have a little taste test see how it's going then add some spinach you don't want to add the spinach too early because it will just disappear into now unless you're using frozen spinach in that case whack it in about now secret tip if you're making something that isn't quite thick enough and you want to thicken it up like a chili con carne or something it's a little bit watery whack in some gravy granules bisto red oh i think all the bisto is vegan and this is like a cheapo version of Bisto, which is also vegan. Okay, so the red lentils have been cooking for about 15, 15 minutes, I'd say. I'm going to strain them in a sieve and whack them in the stew. Oh, yeah. Mm. Now this is looking really tasty. The sauce is nice and thick. I whacked in a little bit of gravy granules just to make it a little bit thicker. It's creamy, it's tasty, it's not too bitter. The sugar kind of took that bitterness sting out of it and it is looking, it, honestly, if you could smell this right now, you'd be salivating. And now it's time to whack in the spinach. Go a bit wild with the spinach because it shrinks. So the spinach is in there now, I would say, don't overcook it. Wait till it just starts to kind of crimple up and looks like it's not fresh out the bag. It kind of goes a little bit dark. Don't let it shrivel to death. About another five minutes and this will be ready to serve. You probably want to put a nice bit of fresh, chunky, yummy bread on the side here. We got some fig bread that we got from Little today. That's going to go in there. So this is what it's looking like as a finished, finished product. Delicious sausagey ailey stew with some spinach, potatoes, some lentils. Uh, I haven't actually got a name for this dish yet. I'll have to try and think of one before I post this. But yeah, that's a wrap. That is the finished product. Delicious stew.